Church, and we are uh, going to start with another song which we all know. I think Jesus will enthrone you.
is no righteous. So we thank you tonight that no matter what's going on in our world, yes. you're the one who satisfies our souls. Yeah. You're the one who completes us. Yeah. Lord, we give you praise tonight for being our Savior, for being our Redeemer, yeah. for being our friend. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful presence here this evening, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are with us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Almighty yes, God. There is none like you. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come as, come as we are Amen. to you, Lord God. Amen. And you give us the gift of righteousness that you purchased Amen. for us on the cross, Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, as we come before your throne of grace this evening, Lord. There is forgiveness, there is joy, there is pre there is your the joy in your presence, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we stand as righteous before you because of what Jesus did for us mm -hmm. and the gift of righteousness he's given us. So we will come tonight, Lord, and we will boldly stand before your throne, yes. as your word declares, Lord, and we will, we will seek your face and we will bring our requests and our petitions and we will joy in the God of our salvation in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm going to jump straight in the, in the study that I have prepared. Um, it's more of a study. I'm, I'm, I'm easier with, with, with preaching, not with being involved with Bible studies. You know? uh, Bible studies needs to be more, more focused, more in detail. And uh, I love that as well. Sometimes I prefer the preaching side of it because I can go away from that and you know, explore with God ideas and explore with God. But this one that um, I felt God wants to touch upon tonight, well, I just called it Psalms. 
So we are studying Psalms. So for tonight, I'm going to focus on the overview of Psalms. Of Psalms. So I'm going to look at one particular Psalm. I know on Sunday we, we looked at Psalm 139, and we discussed about feelings and, and, and David and other things. But tonight, I just want us to, to look at the Psalms, the book, the collection. And um, I've got uh, an interesting take on, on how to look at the whole book. And uh, I couldn't argue with this idea, with the way the things were, were, were split and put in place. So I would uh, ask you tonight to look at this book of Psalms from a different point of view. And uh, I'll go in a minute. In it. So I, I wrote down here that the Psalms are a collection of poems, poetry, lots of metaphors, symbolism, and songs. And I believe we can agree on that. Psalms is just a collection of poems and then and, and, and songs. And some of these poems and songs were uh, either sang by choirs, by people at home. But we're looking at the Psalms as being the Bible. Bible, the Psalms were never, were, to start with, they, they were not the Bible. It's just a collection of songs, collection of poems, collection. There's a lot of symbolism in, in their metaphors, but Book of Psalms, however, has a continuity. It looks like it is written for a reason. And I did, I read, I read the Bible from, from I read the whole Book of Psalms a few times. And what I used to do, I used to pick and choose whatever I liked. What fit me the best, I was like, I like this song. And I looked at that at the verse, and I thought, this is mine. What, you know, what's your favorite song? Song numbers, and then, because and, and, this, 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 this book, if you can imagine, like a list of, of poems and, and songs, and we, we pick and choose whatever fits us best. And uh, I, I, would, I would think, that Psalms somehow takes us through the whole Bible, and I will explain in a minute how, how a collection of songs, how a collection of poems can take us through the Bible. Well, if, if I give up my picking and choosing from the Psalms, and I'm, we're looking at it as a whole, and we try to use our memory a little bit now, if we take whole 150 Psalms and we split them in columns, and we put five columns, right? One, two, three, four, five columns. Just imagine these columns. And column one, we can imagine that it's Psalm 1 to Psalm 41. Column two would be Psalm 42 to 72. They were split by that. Uh, 73 to 89, and feel free to, to check this when you get home. And then I'm, I'm, I'll explain in a minute why they're split the way they're split. Right, so first 40 Psalms, then another 30, then from 73 to 89, then from 90 to 106, and then from 107 to 150. So five columns full with Psalms, right? So in, in, in Psalm 1, and now we're gonna, we're gonna go through every column. What, what, why it's split like that and why I, I find that so exciting is because it gave me personally a different view of the Psalms. I used to see Psalms <laughs> through what I liked from Psalms. I didn't look I didn't look at the songs like the whole collection of songs or the whole collection of poems. I always looked at, at songs through what I preferred. I used to think that song, that song, and that was my understanding of songs. But if we put them all together in these columns, if you like, in column one, it's Psalm 1 to 41. And Psalm 1 and 2, they describe in some, some way all the whole um, 150. Psalm 1 and 2, for some reason, they also could take us through a lot of the Bible. Take us through the Bible. And I'll explain in a minute. Psalm 1 talks about the garden of evil and what the humans did, did. And, you know, when they got expelled from the garden, we find that in Psalm 1. That, that's what starts in Psalm 1. And towards the end of Psalm 1, uh, we, we find a word which is Torah. And the Torah in Psalm 1 was uh, that tree that has the root in, in, in the, in the uh, river of life. And 
it was guidance and in, in, so we, we find that word in Psalm 1. Psalm 2 talks about a king that will come from the line of David, that will come to restore God's kingdom over the nations. Now, I find it interesting because this is Psalm 1 and 2. So in, in, basically, in Psalm 1 and 2, we, we find these four, four things. Temple, we identify temple in Psalm 1 and 2. We identify the Torah, we identify the Messiah, we identify the, God's kingdom. So, so in the very beginning, we get these four ideas of temple, Torah, and then Torah, I would say here, would represent for us tonight guidance and, and instructions and the word of God and, you know, uh, loving God's law, God's, God's uh, guidance. Messiah, yeah, in this case is Jesus, and, and God's kingdom, what Jesus came to proclaim. So, I found it very interesting. In the first two songs, we get this view of you know, the garden of evil, the humans, what happened, then the Torah, then the Messiah, then the kingdom of God. And, and that is in that column one, at the very base. Column two, Psalm 42 to 72, overall, or when the majority of the Psalms that we read, they talk about David's complicated history and his royal family. A group, if you like, if, you, if we could group them, we would say 42 to 72 is David's complicated history and his royal family. Now we move to another column, column number 3, 73 to 89, talks about the downfall of David's family and the exile of Israel. Yeah, so, so column number 3, 73 to 89, talks about how David's family went downhill and how the whole uh, Israel was conquered by Babylon and, and, and they had to go in, in, in exile. Four and five, or we'll putting these two together, the, the main message in here is hope for Messiah, a new temple, and God's kingdom. Now, on column five, at the very end, it kind of concludes a little bit. I find this, the, the, the way the songs are arranged very interesting in order to follow this theme, you see? It, we're looking at first column, second column, third, fourth, and fifth. So it's kind of thing going through the way they're arranged. And uh, the book ends with five-part conclusion, which is mainly praising God for his faithfulness. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna dive a bit deeper in, in, in this in this um, in the way that the psalm work was structured. And um, I hope here uh, I'm not gonna interfere with anything of your uh, study, so I'm just trying to get deeper, but keeping the idea of seeing the Psalms from the distance, not getting deep into them, yeah, not, not picking our favorites. Um, the first 70 Psalms, column 1 and 2, talks about David and their rhythm. By David. It's David's fingerprint all over. It's David's personality all over. It's David expressing his thoughts, his feelings, his. And it, it, it's very important. Half of the songs are linked to David. Why is this important? Well, we all know that David trusted God in his many times of uh, hardship. Correct? You know, we, we know about David, how he trusted God. We read about David in 1 and 2 Samuel about his history, but then he described the inner being in the Psalms. So we have a very interesting picture of David in the Bible. One, the story of him without knowing exactly what he feels, how he is, and what we're guessing because it's about David, but then we have David himself saying, what he feels, how he thinks, and what he thinks. And in these poems, David goes, uh, does three main things. One, he starts with exposing his fears. There's a group of Psalms where he exposes his fears, then he moves to another part, which is 
confession of his sins, failures, and that is very humble from David. He, he, he confesses his sins, he, 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 he brings his failures into the light. He's not, David is not hiding his fa failures. He actually brings them into the light and he says, this is me, this is what I've done, this is, he, he confesses them. And the third part is praises God for helping him. And David is constantly talking about a desire of being in God's temple. Now, this is, this is uh, what I want to touch on tonight. So. The, the picture is this. First 70 Psalms is David, written by David. And in the first 70 Psalms, David does this. He exposes his fears. He says how, how scared he is, running away and being. And, and if we take the Psalm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the first 70 Psalms, and if we compare that chronologically with what happened to David, it's not in the correct order. Psalm 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 would, would, would jump from 1 Samuel to 2 Samuel to 1 Samuel to 2 Samuel. So if you take that chronologically, it doesn't follow David's life. So the, the order of the Psalms do not follow David's life chronologically. And that is also very important because the way the Psalms are numbered, the first 70 focuses on David. And David does something here which is very interesting. He talks about God's temple. Now, when I say God's temple, we don't think about that phrase much. David talks about God's temple. Now, tonight I want to leave you with this. If you, if you leave tonight with this, then that's, that's enough for me. What temple? Which temple? It's David we're talking about. There was no temple. We know the temple was built by Solomon, wasn't it? How, why and how is David talking about the temple? The temple doesn't exist. When this poem were, were written, the temple was not done. Isn't that interesting? And I was thinking about this. I thought, I've never picked up on that. David goes on and on and on about God's temple. What temple? There is no temple. David dies and there's no temple. Which temple? Right? So he goes on and on. I've got two verses. Uh, one verse here. Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. What temple, David? What, 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 what temple is David talking about? So there is no temple. His son builds the temple, but David's long gone. We know about the tabernacle. But David specifically talks about God's temple here. That was not built yet. And, and what's interesting is that, remember, column 1 and 2 is David, verse 70 Psalms. Then we have another one in the middle, column 3. And in that, that groupage of Psalms, we, we see the downfall of David's family and the exile of Israel. And why is this crucial? It's because David wrote all these poems and all these songs. They're all done, written, they're down. Then his family goes down, David is gone. The whole Israel goes into exile. And there, in that period, there's a group of songs and a group of poems written, right? That, that, that we can say from 73 to 89. And then the Psalms are written by latter uh, generations of exiles. People that are not anymore in Israel, you know, Babylon comes and, and, and takes them out. And they're writing songs and poems. They continue to write. But what do they have this time? They have first 70 written by David taken with them. So, so because David was so famous and he was so known and he was so loved by everybody, whatever he would say would become probably written down. What did David say? They would, they would talk about it. They would, they would have it with them. I, I, I really doubt that. When, when, the, when Israel went into exile, 
these 70 songs of David were left. Okay. And the, the, the proof is that they took it with them, we have them today, took it with them and they would have talked about it. Now, they would have carried on writing, because from Psalm 90 to 150, the majority, the, 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 I would say almost all of them, are written by future generations after David. Not uh, based on what David did, but they were not David, and they were not in David's place. But what's interesting about this is, is that they took David's style, they took David's approach to uh, exposing fear, and they were fearful because they were in exile, with, with, with confession of sins that carried on through the Psalms, and, then it, and praising God for helping them. In this case, it becomes very personal because they really need help because they're in exile. So it becomes very personal. And there are two, two pictures here. David did not see the temple. I, I believe we can agree on that one. The future generation did not see the temple either. Only few generations saw the temple. The ones that built it, the ones that enjoyed it, and few after until it got uh, knocked down. But songs carry on after the temple is gone. So what does that mean? That means that the songs and songs were not written about a physical temple. God is inspiring uh, 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 David to talk about a temple that David did not see what he desired. Now, does not that apply to us today? When we, when we, when we um, read Psalm 84 verse 10, better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Is that in the Bible? It is. Is that in Psalm? Yes. It's written by future generations, Psalm 84, so it's after David, but when they say in your court, in your temple, in, in God's gathering, it takes away the physical temple, but it brings in a feeling of in God's presence. And for some reason that, be, that becomes very real for us today. We don't have the, the David's temple. David didn't have a temple. Only Solomon had a temple. But God's temple is not that temple. God's temple for us today, thousands of years later, it's very um, present, isn't it? When we, when, we, when we say, one thing I ask for, for, for from the Lord, this only I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the, day, all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. Does that apply to us today? Of course it does. Does that lift our hearts up? Yes, it does. Does that make us excited? Yes, it does. We, we don't have that temple, but that particular temple, what does it mean for us today? It means this, these people together. And, and, and things happen after that, no? We, we, the exiles, I'm coming back to exiles a little bit now. David's prayers becomes their prayers. Does that make sense? David's prayers becomes the exiles' prayers. David is helping people to get in God's presence even if the temple's missing, and they learn to pray like David. Um, so it says, Psalms, it's just a list of songs, isn't it? Poems. <laughs> Created to help us to meditate on God's kingdom and the coming of Messiah. Now, the last two columns, we see in them. Uh, Psalm 90 to 106 and 107 to 150. Hope, if we put them together, it would be hope for Messiah, new temple, and God's kingdom. And that kind of, that becomes very actual for us, doesn't it? We're still today, okay, we, we, we're, we're not hoping for Jesus to, to come, but we are hoping for him to come again. And that desire, that feeling, is very actual. When, 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 when we read in, in, in the Psalms, there, uh, somebody's heart saying, come Jesus, come Messiah. And for us, it's come Jesus. And even if he, he, he's coming again, isn't he? So he, he connects with us again. And uh, 
Yeah, 107 to 150, the last column, hope for Messiah, new temple, God's kingdom, on the other side of their exile. But that applies to us today. Because for us, okay, we were not in exile, but our life sometimes feels like one, doesn't it? And it, it becomes very personal. And we, and we say that, don't we? So, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with a, with, with a quick recap. Psalms, a collection of poems and songs, but if we, if we look at them as a big picture and we don't pick and choose, we can see that there is a flow. And then for me, that was very interesting. Half of them are written by David, and he sets up a way of being, praying, desiring God. That is, that, that the second half of the Psalms are based on, but they all are relevant for us today. And uh, yeah, I, I, I find that very exciting, and I didn't realize that David says in Psalm 27, uh, to seek God in his temple, to spend time with the, you know, gaze upon God. There was no temple. Yeah, so, so today I think we can say exactly the same thing and feel exactly what David said. And it's still relevant. It's still actual. I, mean, I, I find that amazing about, about the Bible. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave you with that. Good night. God bless you.